I'm Jennifer Krauss, and I'm an associate professor at the University of Northern Colorado, and I'm here today with Dr. Seth Jenny. Seth, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I uh, teach at Slipper Rock University, and I've also created and taught several different technology-related courses, uh, technology for physical educators. Uh, we created an online certificate, which focused on current trends in health and physical education, and I've also taught several technology-related courses for sport management students. A book that Jen and I just recently wrote, and that is Technology for Physical Educators, Health Educators, and coaches and uh, it's due out April 1st 2020 and we want to talk to you today about one of those uh, topics that are in the book. So today uh, we're going to specifically talk about uh, the use of portable wireless speakers. Seth can you tell us a little bit more about what a portable wireless speaker actually is? Sure so as I'm doing that I'm going to pull up a few images you can see uh, this is a battery operated portable wireless speaker. It's got a telescoping um, handle, so it looks like carry-on luggage. There's wheels at the bottom. Uh, it connects via Bluetooth technology, so a wireless connection to most often people may use a smartphone. They may use a, a tablet or a, um, an iPad, for example, but it allows you to control streaming music through the device. It allows you to connect, and I'll, let me show you another image that will, a microphone so that you can enhance and increase the volume of voice while you're talking. Sometimes people may even use a headset with a, a, a Bluetooth connection so that while they're teaching, it has an increased um, volume of your voice so that, you know, as, as a PE teacher, as a coach, uh, if even if it, you're at like a sporting event where you're trying to make a major announcement to a group of people, um, it will all increase the volume of your voice. Uh, these ones tend to be about 50 to 100 watts. Also, the capability of playing a radio, um, and it has uh, other auxiliary inputs where you can, if you do not have Bluetooth uh, wireless connectivity, you can hardwire equipment to the device as well. Why would someone really consider using one of these? Well, um, in the book, we go into a, a pretty good detail of how music can uh, reduce uh, feelings of effort while you are exercising. And so you can see the number of, of recreational as well as professional athletes that exercise to music because it helps enhance uh, the, their performance and, and reduce the feelings of, of effort while they're exercising. But if we're thinking about it in a coaching management and or physical education teaching management sense. Um, if, if you've been teaching in the gym, you know that how music can motivate people to, to exercise, um, to get active, to dance, uh, but you can also use it for classroom management purposes. Stopping the music whenever you're wanting to give an auditory cue to your class to, you know, I used to, uh, when I was teaching K through 12, um, the, when the music stops, that means three, three commands, stop, look, and listen. So stop what you're doing, look over at me and listen to what I'm going to say. And so that's a great cue. So you may not, you know, you don't need to use a whistle for that. You can, you can stop the music. It also stop it. It might be the cue to, all right, move to the next station when you're doing circuits or, or station types of activities. And then the last thing is, which you already mentioned, increasing the volume of your voice. If what kind of equipment do we need, um, obviously, besides the speaker? Yeah, so um, you can see here in this image, we've got uh, <clears throat> the iPhone or some type of, of, of smartphone. That, if you're streaming, it's going to need to have Bluetooth uh, connectivity if, if you're wanting to do it wirelessly. And then you also need to have a streaming app on there. If you're wanting to use it for enhanced voice volume, you might have a headset, you might have a microphone, but um, that's sort of the, the, um, the gist of the equipment. Um, you know, before we had this, it, it was a good environment where everybody's having fun, but once we brought the music out there and the kids hear um, Kids Bop, uh, which is current music that is, uh, I guess, tamed down to reduce some of the inappropriate um, verbiage within the songs but the, all the kids know the songs enhanced time on task but they're dancing whenever they're waiting in lines for do activities and they're staying more active just because there's music there to motivate them yeah i 
I can definitely attest to that. As soon as music is part of the um, the class or the practice, um, there's definitely more engagement there. Um, so how does it actually work? So for the Bluetooth wireless connection, um, what you'll need to do is on the device, they will typically have a Bluetooth button and um, you click that button. So that's this uh, image right here, that icon. And then it starts to um, it transmit a signal in your phone, you're going to want to uh, find that device and then connect to it. And then you're giving uh, that piece of equipment access to that music streaming service. And then it will just play through the actual uh, speaker there. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is that these are battery operated. And um, some of the ones that, that we've used will last 50 hours. So I've gone a whole cross country season uh, probably, you know, 40 practices, and I charged it once across the whole season. That's a real be benefit when you're doing field days and some of these other things where you don't have to set up your speaker next to an, a, an electrical outlet. Right. And I will say, I'll just add that, you know, we have a couple different Bluetooth speakers. You know, there are some that are real small um, that you could put in the palm of your hand, um, and then up to some that are as big as the one that you have in the picture there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you really have to consider what's the volume output of that as well. I know the small ones don't really work in our gym um, for a whole class, but if I just wanted a small group to do something mm -hmm. in the corner, I might use one of those small Bluetooth um, speakers right there. What is it that you like about this? Yeah, so number one is the, is the portability of it. We can bring it outside. It doesn't need to be next to an electrical outlet, so it's battery operated. Um, as you can see here, it's wirelessly connected, so I can be on the other side of a group of students and stop the music. I don't have to come over to an old school CD player and hit pause. Um, I can go to the next song or uh, you know skip a section of of, of a song. Um, very easily. Some of them are water, I wouldn't say waterproof, or water resistant, so it, you, it can handle some light rain depending upon the, the model that you have. And then it just really motivates the kids to want to be there even more when they have music that they enjoy. Great. So what are some challenges um, or even solutions to consider when using this? If you're streaming music and, and it's music that's not saved on the actual device, uh, you're going to need to have uh, unlimited data because you're going to be using um, uh, data for that. Um, that's some of the challenges. You might need to pay for a subscription music service, so that might be a little, a little bit of money. Sometimes where I've had the radio on and um, inappropriate songs come on as compared to using a streaming service, so that's a consideration. If you use some of this, the free streaming services, they, you know, you'll be in the middle of an activity and then a commercial comes on. You have to be aware of what's the range of the Bluetooth connection as well. Um, some of them might be um, 150 feet. Uh, you know, some of them might be you need to be within 30 to 50 feet. While you're talking, it's making me think about like the using my Apple Watch. So mm -hmm. I use my watch a lot to control my music um, and I don't have my iPhone in my pocket. So if that is an issue, maybe, um, you know, I could even just control it from my watch. If yes. I want to, just as yep. long as the phone itself is connected to the speaker. Um, can you give me some other examples about how you've used this? You no. Know, so for example, uh, when I was uh, teaching elementary physical education and we were doing a soccer unit, um, we maybe had the Mexican hat, uh, hat dance song where it's da 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 well, when it was um, da -da 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 -da, the students were doing toe taps on the top of the ball. And then, so they got the musical cues of what they were supposed to do. And then when it went into the, the rest of the song, that's when the students were dribbling around, being aware of spatial awareness, ball control, and then went it back to the, the toe tap sections of it. So um, motivating them, it may be relating to the actual motor movements that we're doing, uh, but also for management purposes, starting, stopping, transitions, um, all those types of things will help enhance a lesson. Thank you so much, Seth. Um, if you want to know more about using a portable wireless speaker, um, you can check out our book, uh, Technology for Physical Educators, Health Educators and Coaches. It will be available in April on the Human Kinetics website and also on Amazon. Oh.